I'll be talking about periodontal attachment in this video. Understanding periodontal attachment is very important since this is the basis for assessing tooth prognosis, periodontal disease progression, and also establishing the correct periodontal diagnosis. Periodontal attachment are structure and tissue that surround the tooth and support in its position. It is composed of cementum, which is a specialized calcified substance covering the root of a tooth, and it anchors the periodontal ligament. Alveolar bone, which is a bone that contains the socket or dental alveoli. And periodontal ligament, commonly abbreviated as the PDL, is a group of specialized connective tissue fibers that essentially anchors the tooth to the alveolus and gingiva, or soft tissue attachment to the tooth. The gingiva forms a collar around a tooth or each tooth. It is attached in part to cementum of the tooth and apically in part to the alveolar process. Imagine if you picked up the gingival margin or free gingival margin with your fingers and start to peel it off from the tooth. Part of the soft tissue will first to detach from the tooth or the root or cementum first and then apically down off from the alveolar bone. And all these four structures, cementum, alveolar bone, PDL, and gingiva are also collectively called periodontium. There are two ways to assess periodontal attachment level around the tooth. One is radiographic examination and second is a clinical examination. Radiograph will show you the tooth, alveolar bone, and the PDL or PDL space, but not the soft tissue attachment. Therefore, you cannot make a definitive periodontal diagnosis by means of a radiograph alone. Clinical exam gives you the additional and very critical data to give a clinical assessment by determining the probing depth, which is the distance from the gingival margin to the bottom of the pocket, and the clinical attachment loss. Even on the same radiograph, clinical presentation may vary. Probing depth can be shallow or deep and attachment loss can be mild or severe based on the soft tissue attachment. So the, all these clinical parameters will give you a different prognosis, a diagnosis, and then likely lead to different treatment. However, radiographs are absolutely necessary in the diagnosis and treatment of periodontal disease. Bite-wing radiograph will give you the best picture of the relationship between CEJ and the alveolar bone since it will project the image of both maxillary and mandibular teeth in the most parallel orientation. So where is this healthy alveolar bone supposed to be on a binding radiograph? It is not located at the CEJ level, but at a distance of about 12 millimeters away from CEJ apically. This distance can vary from one to three millimeters in healthy individuals. Remember, bite-wing radiograph is two-dimensional view of what's actually three-dimensional structure. So the bone level has to be clearly more than two millimeter away from CEJ for you to say there is bone loss. And what you cannot visualize with radiograph, you can detect it clinically. You use periodontal probe with marking to not only measure the probing depth, but also to locate the bottom of the pocket, which is the most coronal part of this whole periodontal attachment. And it starts from there and then down apically. The distance between the bottom of the pocket depth to the alveolar crest is called supracrestal attached tissue, or previously called biologic width. The average distance of supracrestal attached tissue, although it depends on the location of the tooth in the alveolus and it varies from tooth to tooth, is about two millimeter. About a millimeter of a junction epithelium and a millimeter of connective tissue attachment. And this distance is what you don't see on the radiograph. And why healthy attachment, including soft tissue, is at CEJ or coronal to CEJ versus the bone level is expected one to two millimeter away from CEJ. If there's parentitis at work, so there's continuous persistent inflammation, there's a host response and eventual attachment loss, all these interactions and so on, the most coronal aspect of attachment, which is equivalent to the bottom of the pocket depth, will move from CEJ apically down along the root. And so you measure this distance of how much attachment you lost from CEJ to the bottom of the pocket, and this will give you the clinical attachment loss. Probing can be uncomfortable for some patients because maybe probing is done too forcefully. Um, probe force should be about 20 to 25 grams, and this number can be slightly intractable or hard to grasp, right? So imagine you want to measure your, how long your nail is since you grew last, all the way to the plate, right? So then you take your probe, 
and you put that in the space right in between your skin and your nail. And then you use, if you use too much force, then it will go into the nail bed and the attachment and it will not be accurate. It will hurt and it will, might bleed. So it's the same idea with the probing. You want to probe in between the space between your tooth and the circular epithelium to the bottom of the pocket without pushing too hard, pushing too deep, or separating the soft tissue attachment because otherwise that will give you inaccurate assessment. It will give you deeper probing depth, it will be painful, and then it will get you bleeding on probing. So hope this helped you better understand the concept of periodontal attachment. Thank you.